Okay, so we are now ready to move on to uh, something pretty different and exciting. <laughs> um, and what that is, is looking at moving images. So we spent all this time saying, oh, okay, I could, uh, I could have a blank P image and I could figure out some interesting algorithmic way to set all the pixels of that image. Or I could have an image that's coming from a file, like frog.jpg. And I could load that image, and I have access to all the pixels, and I can draw it on the screen, I can manipulate it, I can do all sorts of stuff. What if, however, we could have a, a camera, I don't know, this is my weird drawing of a camera, and what if I could pull in a live image from a camera into my processing sketch? What could I do with that? What if I had a, you know, a movie file? Could I pull in that movie and play back that movie in my processing sketch, speeding it up, slowing it down, going in reverse? How could I, how, do, how does all this stuff work? How do we make this happen? So let's first just take the basic transition from flat image file to camera. And the way that we're going to do this is with processing's capture object. So the capture object is part of processing's video package. Now I just realized there's kind of a crucial component to this. If you are using, and again this part of the video sadly is going to be just become obsolete in a little while, but uh, if you are using the 3.0 alpha series, and hopefully it will be a beta soon or a final version, this will be true for all of the 3.0 versions of processing. Let's come over here and look. Uh, uh, here, if, you, if I go to um, import library, let me just zoom in here, import library add library, and I pull this up, your, um, you won't by default have the video library. So I'm going to search under processing, and this is what you're looking for. You want to find in this contributions manager the video library by the Processing Foundation. So in order to run any of these examples or to work with live video or recorded movies in processing, you need this particular video library. In all the previous versions of processing prior to 3.0, this library came with processing, but it's quite a, a large uh, a large library and also it's maintained and updated on a separate schedule. So uh, by pulling it in separately, um, all you need to do is, hey, whoa, I have it actually, amazing. I, uh, uh, I forgot that I just did a fresh install of processing here. So well, this is, we're gonna test this out. You just wanna hit this install button and uh, while it's downloading and it should be ready to go and now we're going to have this library. Yeah, and then it'll say remove. So if you don't have the video library, make sure you get it. Okay, back over here. Once you have the video library, you now have access to the capture object. You also have access to the movie object. So capture being live video from some camera that's connected to your computer. Uh, movie object it, you'll use for uh, video files um, that you're loading and playing back in processing. So here's the thing. The, the, the thing that's the most wonderful about this is that the, both of these things are P images, essentially. All of the functionality, image, pixels, width, height, copy, any piece of functionality you learned and practiced and did with P image, you could do exactly the same functionality with capture and movie. The only thing that's different is when you load a P image, like frog.jpg, those pixels are never gonna change unless you change them, right? That file, that image is a flat static image. Those pixels are the pixels. You could do all the same operations, but with a capture object or a movie object, those pixels might be changing according to some schedule. Of course, we have total control over that schedule. We could say, give me fresh pixels from the camera or stop giving me fresh pixels from the camera or advance the next frame of the movie or don't advance the next frame of the movie. So this is an added piece of the puzzle that we'll be able to work with as you start using these classes. So let's, let's sort of, uh, let's look and see how this would work. And there's a couple little nuances here. So I'm back over here and I'm in a sketch. So this is just a kind of a simple processing sketch that, that we, I think we did at some point in an earlier video. I'm loading an image and I'm drawing it on the screen. I'm using a couple things. One, you can say I can dynamically resize the image as I draw it using the mouse, or I can also tint it, meaning change its color. So what I want to emphasize in this just first uh, part of this video is 
Let's make this the capture object from the camera. I have a laptop in front of me, it's not all magic. Let's get that image from that camera and let's see that there and do all the same stuff for it. So instead, the first step is instead of a P image, I want to say capture and I'm going to just say video. Now notice as soon as I do that, I get an error message. It says, um, if I look at the errors, you can say the class capture does not exist. Now, this needs a little bit of work here, but it's actually giving me a suggestion, which is nice. This is part, capture and movie are both part of that processing video library that we just installed. So even though I've installed the library, I have to, in my code, make an explicit reference that I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to, processing will add this for you automatically in a bunch of different ways, but I'm just going to do it manually. So I just need to have an import statement at the top, import processing.video.star. Now I have my capture object. Now, you might think you would say something like, oh, I said load image, load capture, or something, create capture, connect video, start video. Um, the way that this works, however, is uh, there is no function like that. We need to use the sort of tools and syntax of object-oriented programming. So let's come back over here, and if I have a video object, the syntax is to say I want to make a new capture object and I need to figure out what goes in there. So what might be some parameters that you need when you're about to connect to a live camera? Maybe you might say, ah, uh, camera over there. I would like a very high resolution image or a very low resolution image. So some parameters we're gonna put in there is the width and height of our requested uh, images that we'll get from the camera. Another piece of information that we might put over here is uh, frame rate. Do I want to get images from the camera at 30 frames, 60 frames, 120 frames, 15 frames? Now, with both of these frames per second. So with both of these, certain cameras are only going to support certain resolutions and certain frame rates. So a lot of this really depends on what you've got, and I'm going to show you a way to figure out what your camera makes available to you. But you know, generally speaking, 640 by 480, 30 frames per second, those are kind of good numbers to use. And in fact, this is an optional parameter. You're just going to get the default frame rate if you don't uh, request a specific one, which is usually 30 frames per second. Now, there's another argument that needs to go in here, and this is one of those tricky ones that appears in a, when you're using, in a lot of times when you're using a processing library. One of the things we need to do is we need to say, hey, capture object, camera. I, you're going to have new images available. You're looking at the room. You're looking at me. You know where I want you to give those images? I want you to give those images to me. Who's me? This particular processing sketch. This sketch. So the keyword this needs to go in here. Now, we could have a much longer discussion about what the keyword this means and Java, and then we could sit here and complain for a while about how confusing these, like, archaic concepts and like old-fashioned languages like Java are, but for, we don't really need to worry about it too much. To make all this stuff work, we just need to remember the keyword this goes there, and I think it's useful to kind of think about the fact that this is referring to this processing sketch. I don't want the camera images to go to some other program on the computer. I want them to go to this processing sketch, and we're telling the library that. This, this happens in a lot of other ways behind the scenes in processing, but you don't always have to use that keyword this. Capture and movie are two instances where you do. Okay, so let's come back over here and let's say, uh, okay, video equals new capture. And what do we say? We need to say this. We need to give it some resolution and a frames per second. Let's do this. And um, so we're making this argument that I can now get rid of frog. We don't need the frog, but everything I did with the frog, I can do with the video. So. I should now, instead of seeing the frog image, I should see the video. <laughs> no video. But I didn't get any errors. Seems, things seem to be working, so things are good. Okay, there's a couple of things we forgot. What did we forget? One thing we forgot is that we have to explicitly tell the video to begin. So one thing we need to add is video.start. There we go. Coming over here, come back. Let's add that in, and I'm going to go here, video.start. Now let's run this again. <laughs> it's not nothing. Oh, but look, you can't see this, but I can see it. There's a green light. I've got a Mac laptop with a built-in web camera. There's a green light over there. So the camera is going, but I don't see the images. Why not? There's another key function that we've missed. 
There's a key function in the video library and it is called read. Read. We need to, with, with, with a loading a static image, it's sort of assumed. Like, let me get that static image. I've got it. Let me display it. With a video image, we need to explicitly say, at this moment in time, I want you to give me the freshest pixels from the camera possible. And the function read reads the current image that the camera is seeing. So one thing I could do just as a sort of quick and dirty solution to this is just say video.read in draw. So every time through draw, I'm like draw is looping, looping, looping. Give me fresh pixels. Give me fresh pixels. Let's run this. We're going to have some weird, crazy video feedback thing probably happening here. Uh. Oh, wait, wait, because the mouse. There we go. Look, look, there I am. And look, I'm actually here and I'm here and there's all sorts of weird, like strange interference and there's green behind me because <laughs> all secrets are now revealed. This is a green screen, but someday I'm going to do this in a different way. And there's like all sorts of crazy jittering going on. I, I, don't, I think a lot of weird stuff is happening um, because of, actually, not necessarily. So what I've done is kind of a bad idea. Um, because, oh, I guess I have the tin. I don't know what's going on with this jitter, but I, uh, a lot of it has to do, I think, with the way I have this recording system going on. But also, let's just say that there is a bad idea here, which is that, which is that, um, um, which is that there's no reason for me to uh, uh, read from the camera every time uh, through draw. In fact, I only want to read from the camera when the camera, like draw is actually running at 60 frames per second. Probably the camera is going at 30 frames per second. I only want to read if there's an available message, uh, if there is an actual, actually a new uh, image available. So one way I can do that, you can see I've added this if statement. If there is a new message available from the camera, uh, and actually let's, we, we see the point that um, tint and the image resizing is working. So, but let's just take that out for right now just so we have something a little bit simpler to look at. So we should see now the image, and you can see none of that weird jittering and all that stuff is happening. And I can, you'll see the <laughs> what's going on here. So, okay, so uh, this works. Um, and, I, and in fact, we saw that that was a bad idea not to have this video dot available. But even this is not the best we can do. We can do better. <laughs> so how can we do better? One way that we can do better is uh, we can implement something called a capture event. And I'm going to take this out here. Look at this. Now I've taken video.read out of draw and I've placed it in the capture event and placed it inside this function called capture event. So what is hopefully familiar to you is a function like this. This function is an event callback. When the event happens, I call back to that function and trigger the code that's inside it. So when I click the mouse, I execute that code. Capture event is an event that's triggered by the camera itself whenever, um, whenever there is a new frame, new image available from the camera. So this now is happening off almost in a different place. Like this is the code for like, I just want to continuously always read from the camera no matter what's going on. So it's always reading the freshest image whenever there's an event. Just to, just to kind of demonstrate this, if I took video.read out of here and put it in mouse pressed, when we run this uh, sketch now, there's no image here. But whenever I click the mouse, it's going to take a snapshot of me, right? I'm only reading the image from the camera when the mouse is pressed. This is like way too much fun. Right? So, so this is something you can see. You have a lot of control here. You can choose when you want to read, when you want to stop reading. I could now copy those pixels into a different frame. So if you wanted to build, say, a photo booth application where you're seeing yourself, you click the mouse, you get a snapshot, it prints it out, it changes the colors, it does stuff to it. All of that image processing stuff we learned, you could do all of this to this image. So any single one of those examples, we can go back and replace the image with the, uh, with a live video. Let's just do one of them. Uh, okay, so let me save this. Oh, uh, there's a couple, there's a l detail that I forgot, but since I'm on this, uh, let's go uh, open recent, uh, the particles one. So if you remember this particular example where all of these things were streaking out and coloring the frog image, um, let's remake that with capture. Let's just see that this actually works. What are we, we're at 15 minutes? That's not terrible. You're still watching. You're very kind. Okay, so I'm going to change to 
capture, and I'm actually just going to call it frog, just to keep the variable name the same. Let's make the window 64. Ah, I, there's a, the, yeah, let's, and let's say instead of load image, now we're going to say create capture, uh, this, 640, 480, and then we're going to say frog.start, and then all I also need is capture event, capture video, video.read. So you see how like in a matter of, I don't know if I said create capture, new capture, create capture doesn't exist. It's, that's, the, that's the function that we, we hope and dream for, but uh, we have to say new capture. So um, all I did really, really quickly here was instead of having a P image and loading from the hard drive, I changed the, the, the variable frog from a P image to a capture. I instigated that capture and I make sure I'm reading from the camera continuously. When I run this sketch, it should actually be identical to what we had before, only now, <laughs> uh, right? It's uh, painting uh, me as I'm trying to like stand still and you can see it's pulling the pixels from me. And I could uh, add like 2,500 of them so we could see this a little bit more clearly. <laughs> this is really like a weird, strange like performance art thing. And you can see that as I move, it's updating. So this is like really where you can start to play around and kind of create this idea of a software mirror. So what is a system, an independent drawing system that you could make where you're pulling colors from a live uh, camera? Actually, this is kind of a, not, not I, I, I sort of like this example. Okay, I'm gonna stop dancing around from the camera. I'm having too much fun here. And okay, so there's, a couple key pieces of uh, here. Now, let's say, oh, I, what I, this is the most beautiful visual artwork made by a computer that anyone has ever made in the world that I must make it bigger and put it on a giant screen and everyone must experience it. So um, I'm gonna make uh, this, I, I don't know what the resolution of this computer is right now. I'm gonna make this 1200 by 700 and I'm gonna run it again and you can see now, uh, here we, uh, okay, so obviously, I have this like giant window, but oh, it didn't work because the image is still like 640 by 480, even though I made my processing window bigger. And actually, the, the way to do this, by the way, in processing while we're here is display width, display height. Now, I, this is what I want to demonstrate. So I'm going to make this giant full screen thing. Uh, it's going to open up. It's taking over the screen. And, but I don't see anything at some point. Uh, because my resolution, everything's all up. Oh, there are some of them and they're coming over here. But again, the image is only this size. So how do we deal with this problem? Well, there's a couple, and I'm just going to go back to 640 by 480 for a second. So there's a couple ways to deal with this problem. Number one is we need to figure out, well, couldn't I capture a higher resolution image from the camera? Why not, right? Let me, if I can get a higher resolution image from the camera. So one thing we want to look at is what are the possibilities themselves. So one thing I'm gonna do, there's um, a function in the video library called list, capture.list. This is actually giving you a string array. So I'm gonna just say print array, so I can see what's there. And we're gonna come down and run this and look in the console. Hopefully I'm running this now, right? And you can see, it's, it's, you can see like, oh, there's all these options. Oh, look, the camera will actually give me a 1280 by 720 image. And look at all my frames per second options. So these are actually all the different, and if I had multiple cameras connected to this computer, then I would see like, oh, I could pick the camera that I want. Maybe I want this external webcam or this other camera source. So this is useful and you can actually pull, you can pull this string out of the array and pass it into the capture constructor. And it'll, uh, so you know, if, if I were to just say this, capture.list index you know, five, what I'm actually doing is uh, using this configuration, 640 by 360 frames per second one. So you can pull from that list the configuration you want for the camera. So that's sort of like a bit of an as a side note that I think is useful for you to be aware of. But I think what is more relevant here is not actually changing the resolution of what I'm getting from the camera. Let's think about it this way. What if I were to say, let me make this 1280 by 960. What I just did is double the size of the window relative to the size of the video that I'm capturing. 
If I run this once again, yet again, as we've now seen this many, many times, it takes so long for this to start up, this is very awkward. Uh, I'm only getting colors in the top left-hand corner because I, um, I doubled the size of the window, but the, the capture image is still less. So what if, however, though, what, these pixels are at an x, y, they're moving all throughout this much larger space. What if I said, as the pixels are moving around this larger space, sample down when you go to look up a color? How do I sample down? I just divide, in this case, I'm just going to divide by two. So now that I've done this, I, I should have a much higher resolution processing window that's looking up colors in a lower resolution image. And you can see here, as I change the camera, I now have this ridiculous thing that I've made at a higher resolution. Um, and I'm waiting for those to come back into the center at a higher resolution, but my capture is still at a lower resolution. The reason why this is so crucial is, and I'm sort of, it seems like I'm spending a lot, like way too much time on this and kind of wasting a lot of time. This video is already 20 minutes long, but this is gonna come up again and again. One of the things I hope to show you in the next video is using a computer vision library like OpenCV to say find faces in an image. However, that's a very expensive process that can be very slow. So you want to find the faces in the lowest resolution image possible, but then use that data that you found in maybe a higher resolution display. So this idea of having a scale, a variable, and w one of the things that you'll see in a lot of my examples if you go through them is a variable like video scale, in this case equals two. So I might say here in capture, you know, width divided by video scale, height divided by video scale. So I can use that variable, which is always keeping track of what's the ratio from my source imagery to my screen resolution. And that's something that I think you wanna uh, kinda keep an eye on as you work on projects like this. Okay, sorry, so I, what I would suggest you do as an exercise, and I didn't get to loading movies, I'll make, put that into a separate video, but what I would suggest as an exercise is go and find something you did with a static image where you manipulated the pixels or looked up colors in those pixels and try to remake that exact processing sketch but with a live capture instead. And see how that goes. And I will see you in another video, in another time, in another place. Okay.